Welcome to the channel. Today, what we're going to be concerned with uh, in particular is uh, is the CRUD of Hive. That is create, read, update, and delete. And uh, we're going to create a file, create a bunch of methods that have all the all the functionality for that for Hive, and gets to it. And first, um, like I said, we're going to work with logger. So we're going to create all the methods of logger. I believe you can have debug uh, debug warnings, informations, errors, and even a WTF or something. Uh, if you have, to, if you want to take to learn more about Logger, of course you go to pub.dev, like so. Go to Logger, like so. Uh, hit Logger. And go to let me just close this. Go to the documentation, and um, oh, okay, wait. Go to you can just come here and check out the the various console outputs. There is verbose, there is debug, there is info, there is warning dot error, and what a terrible failure log. So those are the various methods in logger, and we are going to create some warnings which you can use. Um, in the during the CRUD process to, to, to give us information about how the process is going along. Let's go on with it and create uh, a file with all these uh, messages from Logger. So we'll go back to our project, uh, right click and create a file. We can call it util, utils to that, like so. And then there we can import um, logger like so, and then we can create a class. We can call it log like this. Static method, static variable. I mean, final logger equals. Logger, they have something called a pretty printer. The pretty name for a printer. So we go, we hit pretty, pretty printer, and colors. We set to true so that the the different warnings have different colors. So we set that to true like this, and we create the various messages. The first one is D for debug. We pass in the message, the message, and um, here we return logger dot d and uh, the message was passed along like this. Um, the next one you can copy this is e. Um, e message that's for error. Uh, the next one is i i message that is for info, like when you create a guy. And the final one is for w, which is a warning, warning. And we hit w, like so. So these are the various uh, messages we'll have. Um, they just receive a message from whatever error it is and return it in the logger with the different color. So that we can, that's why we say the colors to true. So that's what we've done here. And that's all we need to do in the utils, like so. So now we come back to our lib folder and now we create the file that will contain all the, the CRUD methods. We right click and we can call it associate data. So we call it associate data like this and we hit enter. Now we need a, a quick rundown of how Hive works. In Hive you store data in things called boxes, right? Um, so if we come, let's, let's search for Hive. I uh, store data in boxes and before you use a box you have to open it. Um, and because data can only be read from an open box um, and when you open a box all the data becomes available so if you're building a really big project with this uh, you 
you might want to open and close different boxes at different times. We're not going to particularly close our box, although it is recommended because it's a very small app. Now, if you're dealing with a lot of data, you could use um, LazyBox, which uh, does not load all the data. But in our case, whenever we open, we're going to be loading all the data. Of course, uh, if you want to find out more information about this, uh, as usual, um, store objects, you see a uh, class where var box await hive dot open box with the name of the, the actual box. So that's how you can get it. And if you want information and examples, you can go to the documentation and samples. And of course, at the documentation that tumbles, um, some pages require you to actually hit edit on GitHub. So yeah, that's where you can find more information and help. And I always encourage you to look at the, the documentation so that you can move forward. First thing, we're going to use change notifier because change notifier works well with provider for starters. And it also, what change notifier does is that it listens, um, it listens for changes. Uh, you can read more about it in the Flutter documentation. It's a part of Flutter. So we're going to create a class. We can call it associate data, uh, which extends, usually extends change notifier, or you use it as a mixin. You could use it as extend or mixin. Change notifier. Change notifier provider is from, is from, is from provider package, but we're using change notifier like this. And... Um, we're going to have the name of the box. So it's going to be a static variable. Uh, we can say static const ring and underscore, call it box, box name. And the box name here will be, um, we, could use, we could call it a so associate box like this. Yeah, and then, um, we're going to have a list of associates. Associate. And we have just, uh, I clicked on that, it, it's been imported. Uh, we can have a underscore associate. As you know, that makes it private. Asso associate, having trouble spelling it. And we're going to have an empty list, like so. And then we're going to have an active associate. This is this is useful in selecting. Like when you click on this, it knows we, who you've clicked on. Like so, we have clicked on Mike, or we have clicked on Sam. So we're going to have a type of associate um, uh, called active associate. Active underscore active associate like this, right? And we are going to have the first method. The first method is going to uh, be get all is going to be to get all the associates, right, as a list. So the method returns nothing. It's called get associate, and um, it's an async method and. Um, Var box. We first have to, you, if you remember, open the box. So we would await, await it because it's async await. We would have hive dot open box, and uh, the box here is associate, and um, we're going to pass in the box name, which is our associate box here. Uh, this is all in the documentation, like this. So we're going to import Hive, and my preferred method is uh, using this. Yeah, so it's imported like that. And then after that, we're going to put them in the list of associates, this one, like so. And we're going to do it a number of times, so you're going to get it really. Box dot values dot to list like this and then when you call that method we want to notify listeners so that they can rebuild notify listeners listeners like this okay so the second method is um that's what that's um get associate get a, a particular associate so we could have associate uh 
uh, type associate, we can say git associate, and this one will take in the index of the particular associate. And we are going to return associate with the index, right? Like so. So, so yeah. This is underscore like this. Get associate. Yeah, get associates. We're getting all of them, right? And here we're only getting one. So this is supposed to be get associate, and this is supposed to be get associates, like so. And um, the third method is uh, when we want to add an associate, like this is the clad part. So we could say uh, void add associate associate and this one will take an associate right an associate of type associate and it's going to be async and the first thing we're going to do is we have to open the box before we do any of this method we have to open the box okay if I can just copy it correctly so we're going to copy it, put it down like so. We have to open the box and then we await the box dot add and we put in the associate like this. And then after that, we put them in the list. Actually, it's the same thing. So we can just copy this to lines. Uh, we can copy it like this, yeah, like so, like putting spaces between them, and yeah, so here we we get the associate of type associate and we use the add method. You could use the put method, the put method requires a key value pair, so um, and when you use add, it auto increments, so it's a bit better. So yeah, that's the, I think, the third method, add associate. This is adding the delete method. So we could say here, void delete associate. It takes in a key, which is provided by the hive object, like this is an async method. And we could copy this first two lines, like this. Actually, we could copy this first three lines, so we could do this. Uh, yeah, we just hit here, come here, hit copy and paste. And instead of the associate, we're going to pass in the key, which it will be used to identify. And um, yeah, and then of course, we, we could also copy notify listeners. We want to add in the, let's add in the, we also want to add in, add in the log, a log method. So we could say log dot i we say deleted member with key and uh, we concatenate key dot to string like this yeah so log has been uh, imported like so and that is the delete method like that is the edit associate so edit associate method so we, we write void edit associate like this this one takes in um, two parameters the associate of type associate so we could say associate like this of associate associate like this and um, the key of type integer, associate key, associate key, like this. And it's async, it's an asynchronous method, like this. And yeah, and first line, as is almost always the case, is we are going to get this, open the box, we copy this, we come down, put it here, then we would await the box dot 
put method which takes in uh, the key value pair and the key here is going to be the associate key and the value is going to be the associate like this and after that we are going to get this line like this copy this put it there and then we are going to set the active associate the active associate is going to equal box dot we're going to read it from the associate key box dot get uh, the key is the associate key associate key like so um, this will allow us to set the active associate from what we have passed in and of course we're going to log it so we're going to put log dot i and we're going to tell tell ourselves in the terminal who we just edited and we're going to concatenate the associate name so associate uh, name like so and finally we are going to notify our listeners like that so basically that's the edit associate so let me explain this a bit um the put method um takes in a key value pair so in this case the key is the associate key right and the value that we're putting into that key is the associate right it's basically like um it's a basically a map um for getting the equivalent in javascript in swift is a dictionary in python also is a dictionary in javascript what are they called um aside from arrays okay I, it, it doesn't jump to the top of my mind but basically that's what we're doing here and a get is used to read so here we read the active associate using the associate key that was passed in in the put that we passed in here when we are editing the associate right so I think that is pretty much straightforward. So the next method we're going to have is set active associate. So for that, it's just going to be void set ac active associate associate like this. And we pass in a key, it's an async method. And um we're just going to get the box. Let's copy this line. Let's copy this line like this, right? Come here, copy this line. And then the underscore active associate is going to be box dot get. That is we're reading whatever is provided uh, by the key. Whatever uh, we read the value from there. So, and then of course, as is required we notify the listeners and next we get uh, we have a method we can call it get active associates so it's going to be of type associate we could say get active so associate like this and this is going to be simple. It's just going to return the active associate. Like so is going to help us get uh, the number of associates useful when we are creating. We'll use it in a list builder. So we could hit in it returns a number. So get so I just can know how many um, tiles to set up. Associate count and this will return return underscore associate dot length so i think dot length yeah like this so i think we have covered everything that we all the methods um yeah we have gotten all the methods we have uh, the various loggers tell us we notify listeners we use change notifier uh, as an extension you could use it as a mixin and um, that is basically what we set out to do today and thank you for listening to me and see you in the next video